Now, Ian Wallace is a professional dream psychologist and author. He's analysed over 100,000 dreams. We always say that. It must be more by now. Throughout his career and says exploring our dreams is the most powerful way to understand what we want out of life and how we can achieve it. So Ian is here and we're going to go to some callers. I think we can go to a caller straight away, can't we? Yeah. So let's... Hello, Liz. How are you? I'm fine, thanks, Steve. Nice to speak to you. And you. Good afternoon. Now, you have a recurring dream. Am I right? That's correct. Okay, well, Ian is listening. Say hello to Ian. Hi, Ian. Hi, Liz. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Right, let's hear the dream. This recurring dream is usually in somewhere very busy, like a city, but I don't recognize the location. Um, I'm always lost, can't find my way home or back to the car or wherever I have to be for a certain time. It's always important that I get there for a certain time. In, in my dream, I'm panicking and I'm trying to say to myself, look, set yourself down, you know exactly where you are, you will get there. Then I wake up, I've no idea how the dream ends, but I always remember it the next morning. Do you know, Liz, I've had exactly that same dream, and I bet millions of others have as well, and that is uh, you just can't get somewhere where you need to be. And it's so yeah. frustrating, isn't it? I've had that dream myself. Uh, okay, well, you, and you always wake up and it's not resolved, yeah? Never resolved, no. Hmm. Liz, so the reason you've had this dream and the reason that Steve and lots and lots of other people have it, it's the 45th most common dream. And there's a couple of things going on here, Liz. The city symbolises your wider professional life and your professional experience and how you are seen in the public eye. And the chaos, emergency, disaster represents some tensions that you're dealing with in public life. So it's maybe something to do with what the work you do, Liz. Being lost symbolises a need to just be yourself instead of always feeling that you have to show up in a certain way for other people. Is it a sign of trouble at work or not? No, it suggests that Liz is very, very professional. And the whole thing about not being able to get to where you need to be in time, Liz, is that you need to make time for yourself. You spend a lot of time looking after people and making time for them. But you need to make some time for yourself, Liz, and that's the action from the dream. Dear Liz, do you spend a long time looking after other people and not yourself? Well, I actually think I'm pretty good about looking after myself, but I do look after other people, although I am retired now. Yeah. Right. So th there is something in the time that you have, Liz, you need to do something, decide to do with it, and make time for yourself. And the car being lost is some maybe some ambitions that you've had to park. So this is the time now to pick up on some previous ambitions that you've had and make the most of them. Thanks very much for being on, Liz. Appreciate it. No top problem. Bye. Bye-bye. And Ian Wallace, the Dream Expert, is on with us. Email from Helen Reed or Red. Stephen, Ian and Tim, my dream is that there are fish in a river and when I catch them, they're always rotten. Poor, smell that. However, I still have to eat them because, well, nothing must go to waste. Quite right. Are you able to help, Ian? <laughs> yes, I am. So in Helen's dream, fish symbolise her ability to immerse herself in her emotional life so she can use her intuition to, to guide herself. Food represents fulfilment. So we have idioms like appetite for success or yeah. hunger for recognition. So rotten fish in Helen's dream symbolise some old feelings that are no longer fulfilling for her and she just has to let go. She needs to use her instincts to move on and become more emotionally fulfilled. Could it be rotting something else? Doesn't have to be fish. Well, if it's any kind of rotting food or bad food, that's the 79th most common dream and it just means that there's something that she has to find more fulfilling for herself. I knew that, 79th. Yes, yes. Quite disturbing, though, that, that that image, don't you think, in a dream? There's no such thing as a bad dream. I'm not it. saying it's a bad dream, yeah, I'm saying it's a disturbing image. Yeah, the disturbing images are really powerful, so <laughs> they take a dream into action and waking life. Yeah. Okay. All right, here's Tim to do the next one. This is from Ian Coates, who's in Kennesaw, Georgia, in the USA. He says, hi, Steve, Ian and Tim. I'm originally from Troon in Scotland, but now I listen online every morning from my office in the suburbs of Atlanta. I keep having two recurring dreams, and I wonder if they're related, Ian. The first one is where I find myself chewing gum, but I put too much in my mouth, and I can't seem to spit out a golf ball-sized chunk of the stuff. I'm thinking it occurs <laughs> when I've bitten off more than I can Wait chew. Wait this cannot be anything like... The the 30th most... Wait, wait, there's another one. Right. Perhaps perhaps I've bitten off more than I can chew on a work project or something. The other one is where I'm in a plane about to take off. We speed down the runway, but the plane is too heavy to take off and can only fly at about 100 feet off the ground for ages. We've had this dream. Uh, you and yes, I, Steve, yes. have had this dream a lot. We never crash, though. We land on a wide road eventually, but I fly a lot for my job. I'm not afraid of flying. In fact, I'm more nervous about landing than takeoff. 
Is there any connection? Can you help, please? Yes, there is a connection. And as you told me earlier, Steve, <laughs> the chewing gum dream is the 54th most oh, common no, dream. It can't possibly and be. And the flight is the 16th most common dream. So the chewing gum <laughs> one, it could be that Ian has bitten off more than he can chew, but the clue is in spit it out. He needs to say something in his workplace and assert himself rather than just trying to keep people happy. So he probably works on big projects or something with a lot of deadlines and he has to meet those. Yeah. The plane represents a project he is trying to get off the ground and all the hills are restrictions and obstacles that he has to deal with. So it seems to be quite touch and go for a while, but he always managed to land it and make it a success. OK, Ian Wallace is here. We're going to come back and talk to Lisa in just a moment. I've also got an email from Deanne O'Brien in Glasgow and maybe Andrew Benton and Isabel Ashton. Uh, if we can get to them, we'll be right back. It's Dreams Evening tonight, and we're back with Ian Wallace. He's the Dreams expert, and we're going to go to another caller now. We're deciphering dreams here. Lisa, is that you? Hi, yep. Okay, and uh, what is your dream, please? Okay, well, I seem to have a lot of dreams about fish as well. Right. Um, and, and the latest one, there were I found some fish in my toilet. Some fish? What kind uh, of fish were they? I think they were goldfish. Right. That like orange fish. So I was quite concerned they were in the toilet. Um, it would be. Time, <laughs> time seemed to pass, and I kept coming back to check on them to check they were still alive, and they were. They seemed to be thriving, despite the fact that there was sort of bleach and chemicals in the toilet. Yeah, because uh, bleach and goldfish they don't really mix, do they? Not really. No. <laughs> <laughs> so what happens in the end? That was it, really. They just they just kept kept growing, and I was sort of really worried about them. But then every time I checked them, they seemed fine. And are you That's having it. recurring dreams about fish? Yeah, I do have a lot of dreams about fish. It tends to be where I forget. I've got these fish that I've forgotten about, and I go back to check them, and I always think they're going to be dead or dying, and they're always fine. And they're not always in the toilet, and are they always goldfish? Not always in the toilet. I think so. Right, OK. Well, that's <laughs> bizarre. What do you say, Ian? Hi, Lisa. So, fish symbolise your emotional life. And the strange thing about this dream, Lisa, is that the fish are in your toilet bowl. So the toilet yeah. bowl represents where you can safely deal with your emotions in private. And bleach is all about... emotions or motions? Well, it's, <laughs> it's, it's a bit of both, yeah, Steve. I think it might be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Anyway, carry on. Yes. So bleach is the strength of your emotions and making sure that your emotions don't affect others or cause bad feelings for others. So there's something that you're doing in Waking Life, Lisa, where you have these strong emotions, but you try and make sure that they don't affect other people. And also the bleach suggests that you need to come clean sometimes with your emotions and express your emotional needs to the people around you rather than just keeping them in a, in a small place and just looking after them yourself. There you go, that's cleared that one up, Lisa. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thanks for being no, thank on. You. Appreciate thank it. You. Bye bye. Email from Andrew Benton in Beijing, China. Ian, about a year ago, I was dreaming, and in the last part of the dream, I was looking down into a very dark hole. Decided to go down there head first. Felt very calm. Just when I felt like I was about to lose control of my descent, I pulled back, woke up. Once awake, my heart was beating very slowly. Does this mean anything? Yes, it does. A hole symbolises a situation where Andrew can understand the deeper capacity that he has for success by looking more deeply into what really motivates him. And as we all know, as we realise our deeper life motivations, it can often have a really profoundly calming effect mm. for us. Mm. OK, email from Isabel Ashton. Here's Tim with it. it. says, Dear Steve, Ian and Tim, I have a recurring dream that my teeth start crumbling and they all fall out. What ah. does it mean? I've been having it for years, says Isabel. This is the second most common dream. Is second? It? Second, yeah. Woo. Teeth troubles. So again, you know, the way that we work with dreams here is to listen to the language. So crumbling teeth is very important here. Teeth represent our feelings of power and confidence. So we show them when we're asserting ourselves or when we're happy. So crumbling teeth suggest that Isabel's confidence is crumbling in some way in waking life. So the action from this dream for Isabel is to be firm in asserting her needs rather than just crumbling to outside pressure. Anything about crumbling teeth in real life? <laughs> well, visit your dentist <laughs> regularly. Thanks for the advice. Uh, email from Sarah Stewart, finally in Stoke, St. Michael, Somerset. Stephen Gang, I regularly have vivid dreams, often of crowded places, particularly places of learning, such as an unknown university. And what I'd like to know is, how can I dream of people I've never met or of places that I've never been to? That's a great question from yeah. Sarah. 
So we need to remember that dreams don't happen to us. We create our dreams and everything in them. Right. And a place of learning suggests that Sarah has an opportunity to learn something about herself in waking life. And all the characters that we create in dreams, even though we've never met them, reflect our own unconscious characteristics and our opportunities for using their value in waking life. Because I've noticed that we do kind of create fictional people that are familiar to us, but we don't know them. So they're familiar because they're really us? That's it. They're aspects of our own character. And what we will do is take individual aspects from people we know and assemble those into a composite character that really represents how we're feeling at that moment. Do we, I, I mean, I don't ever remember, I mean, I remember characters and I remember aspects of a dream, but I don't ever really remember faces. If I remember a dream, I don't remember faces. I remember places, but not faces. That's an interesting concept. Yeah, that's very good because the face is the key symbol of the identity and who you are. Right. So you're probably far more concerned with relationships and connections and have that deeper unconscious awareness, Steve, rather than just specifically looking at people's faces. All very interesting. Ian Wallace, a professional dream psychologist and author, analysed thousands upon thousands of dreams and says exploring our dreams is the most powerful way to understand what we really want out of life and how maybe we can achieve it. OK, and Ian Wallace will return in a few weeks' time. Thanks, Ian. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Tim.